here we will talk about how to solve the uh, uh, constant coefficient, linear ODE. So this is the outline first. I will uh, talk about uh, what is a differential equation and then what is linear differential equation. So usually in bachelor study, we'll learn many theory about the linear system, like uh, in easy something like a linear circuit or yeah. Or maybe even for C for engineers, that you learn about a control system. So yeah, there may be something like that. Yeah. You you would like to use some something like Laplace transform to to describe a system. So those theorem are for the linear linear system. So yeah. So here we also talk about linear differential equation, which means that you can use a linear differential equation to describe a linear system. And then we talk about constant coefficient linear uh, ODE. So constant coefficient means the coefficient for the uh, for the the coefficients for the for the differential equation are are constant, which means that it is not related to time, then yeah, it makes yeah, it makes the this kind of constant coefficient linear ODE has a systematic way to solve. So and I will talk about the procedure we will find the homogeneous homogeneous solution and the non-homogeneous solution or we sometimes call it a particular solution, depends on different textbooks. Some textbook may call it a like complementary solution, particular solution, and some text will we call it homogeneous solution or non-homogeneous solution. And then if we add them together, it will form the complete solution. Okay, so first differential equation. So and actually I think in maybe primary school or or high school, so we will learn about something called the algebraic equation. So algebraic equation. So it's something like with like uh, maybe three x plus two equals eight. So and then you try to find what is the value of x. So it is so, so called algebraic equation because the e uh, the uh, the equation itself only uh, only contain the algebraic calculation like uh, add, subtract, multiplicate, uh, multiply, di divide some uh, something called arithmetic calculation and then you try to solve the unknown variable so in this equation in this equation the unknown is a variable so it only have, has a value rather than a function okay so in here uh, in mathematics, a differential equation is an equation that relates one or more functions. So the unknown in the differential equation is a function rather than a single value. So it makes things more complicated. So uh, we involve the functions and their derivative. So in calculus class, you know what is derivative. So so or sometimes we it is similar to the differential differential okay so but in, in Chinese derivative is Dao Su or this is Wei Fen okay so uh, there's a bit different between them but yeah they are similar concept so for differential equation it consists of uh, the function and also the derivative okay so uh, yeah so of course, for differential equation, you we can also further divide into ordinary differential equation and also uh, partial differential equation. Mm, yeah. So, but for ordinary differential equation, it means that an equation consists only ordinary derivative, uh, one or more dependent variable with respect to a single dependent variable. Which means that, um, for example, here. Uh, here, for example, this one. Okay, so we have a dy dx plus a 5y per, uh, equals exponential to x. So here, in this sense, we will consider y is a function of x. 
y is a function of x here. So here x is called the independent variable. X is called the, uh, x is called the independent variable. And y is the unknown function, the unknown function. So in that case, this function has only a single uh, variable. So when you take the derivative, you can use d to stand for the ordinary differential. So it's written as dy dx. And if you, I'm not sure whether you have learned the uh, multivariable calculus. Multivariable calculus. Calculus. So in that sense, uh, you might have um, more than one variable, like, um, uh, let's see, uh, let's say, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, oh, and, and, and quick example is like, uh, the e-view, the e-view can be a function of x, y, and z. So, uh, so this is, also like a function, also like a function. And in that case, uh, the E field is a function of the X, Y, Z coordinate. So in this sense, if you put in different value of X, different value of Y, different value of C, you will get different value of E. And if you still remember, when we try to link the E field with the um, uh, electric potential, we have a uh, equation like uh, the E field is negative gradient of V, uh, negative gradient of V, so which is like a negative uh, partial partial uh, X V, and then I hat, and then plus a partial V partial Y J hat, and then partial V partial Z K hat. So this is not D, this is not D, this is uh, this one. So we call it the partial derivative. Partial derivative. Uh, pair wave. Uh, pair wave. So because V, uh, also V is also a function of X, Y, Z. So then we cannot write D, D, V, D, X unless you know uh, v is not related to other variable. If it, if you don't know yet, if you uh, if you don't know whether it relates to other, so it may be related with other variable like x, y, and z. Then you should write it as a partial v partial x rather than dv dx. So in this sense, it consists of partial derivative, which is not the ordinary derivative. So for the Ordinary differential equation, it only consists of ordinary derivative, which means that the function has only a single dependent variable. Single dependent variable. Not necessarily x. For example, for this one, for this one, you can see we have a dx dt and then dy dt. So it still have only one single variable. So you can regard this x is x of t, and then y is also y of t, which means that x and y are function of time, so that we can take the derivative of x of t with respect to time. So we have a dx dt. Uh, you can also write it as a dx t dt, but for simplicity, dx dt uh, really means this one. Or here we can write it as a dy of t dt. Okay, so in this case, we have a ordinary differential equation with two unknown function, but there is only one independent variable, t. Okay, but of course, uh, if we have only one, one equation but two unknown function, then we might not be able to solve it, solve the, something like the unique solution or, yeah, for or for um, differential equation, you don't necessarily have a unique solution. Maybe you have a multiple solutions. Okay, but at least you can see uh, this is the function, this is the derivative. And for this case, you can see the original function y and then the first derivative and the second derivative. 
So not necessarily gimmick to first derivative, you can have a nth derivative, it's okay. So all these are, are like the ordinary differential equation. And actually for ordinary differential equation, usually it's easier than solving the partial, de uh, partial derivative, uh, partial differential equation. So it is called uh, PDE, partial differential equation. But actually in this course, we will still try to solve some simple partial, derivative, uh, partial differential equation, like the uh, wave equation, wave equation in chapter 33. Okay, chapter 33. So after finishing chapter 27, chapter 31, we'll talk about chapter 32 and 33. So chapter 30, uh, 32 is about master equation and 33 will be about the uh, EM wave. So which means that we try to uh, derive the wave equation from the master equation and then try to solve it. And the, equa uh, and the solution to the wave equation is called the uh, EM wave. So we'll talk, it, talk about it later, but yeah. But only limit to simple PDE, we were able to solve it by hand. Otherwise, we may try to use some uh, use, use the computer with some uh, numerical method to solve. Okay, so here we talk about linear differential equation. <laughs> linear differential equation. So for linear differential equation, you can see oh, this is quite complicated. <laughs> this is quite complicated. Okay, so here we have this f, and then within the parenthesis, we have x, the first derivative, up to the nth derivative. So in this sense, if an uh, equation, okay, so here, x is the unknown function, and then t is the variable, t is the independent variable. Okay, so if this, if on the left side, uh, which consists of the unknown function and its derivative and up to the nth derivative we will call it we will call the equation is nth order uh, regarding to this highest derivative okay so and on the right side it does not relate it to the unknown function anymore it only relates to the independent variable so this is a general form of the uh, linear differential equation and if it is linear, it means that this f is linear. So it is something like something stupid because, okay, when we talk about this is a linear differential equation and then we define this f here and then we call, or if this is a linear differential equation, f is linear. <laughs> okay, but what does linear mean? Uh, I will talk about it slightly a bit later. Okay, so here it says, and nth order ODE is said to be linear if the functional, okay, so first, this is not a function. Here we call it functional. In Chinese, we can call it a fan han. So you can regard it as a function of a function. A han su de han su. So we can call it a functional. Because this is like a function of a function because these are input and the input is not a number anymore because when we talk about function, it is like, uh, for example, sine of x, uh, y equals sine of x. So sine of x is a function and then the input is a value because, uh, for example, if you put uh, x to be pi over 6, then sine of x will be uh, 1 half. Uh, yeah, 1 half. Okay, so this is a function. If you put in a number and then it will output another number. Here, uh, the input of this functional is not a value anymore. It, this, is a, this is a function and maybe it has multiple of a, a function. So, so this is like a function of a function. And then of course, uh, g of x is still a, g of t is still a function. Okay, so if the function of f is linear and can be written as this form, so this is a slightly rigorous definition. So you can see on the left side, it of course consists of um, x, the first derivative up to the nth derivative. And then, okay, so the form is like, this is the function of time multiplied by the nth derivative 
and then a function of time multiply the n minus one derivative all the way down to the function of t uh, function of time and then multiply the original function so on the left side only the only the left side has the term about the, the unknown function and and its derivative on the right side it only consists of the independent variable so when we call it linear it means that uh, all this unknown function and its derivative only appear to be first order in terms of the power, not the derivative. Of course, this is the n nth derivative, but we only have a single of this function. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the nth derivative of x is still another function, just like if you take derivative of a sine of x, it becomes cosine of x, it's an other function. So here, all this function is still a, a first order. Okay, so the counter example is like, if we have something like, uh, for example, uh, yeah, here, here. This is the, this is a, a unknown function. If we take sine to the unknown function, this is not, this is not linear, or if we have x to be the unknown function. If you take square, it is not it is not linear. If we have this x and then x prime, so if we just distribute this x prime here, so x prime minus x times x prime. x prime is still linear, but this term is not linear. So overall, this is not a linear ODE. So when we see here, Okay, so we can see the form like uh, y double prime, the second derivative of y minus two times the first derivative of y plus y equals zero. So only have all the terms are with one order of the of the unknown function or its derivative. Okay, this is the first derivative, so within the parenthesis. So it means the derivative rather than power. So if it is uh, x cubed, this is this is power, x to the third power. And x cubed is not linear, but x, uh, the third derivative of x is linear, okay? And then here we have a 3t. This is function of the independent variable. And then this is the unknown function. The first derivative of, of the unknown function, this is linear, this is linear. Of course, exponential to t is non-linear, but this is only related to the independent variable. If it is uh, exponential to x, then, then this is not linear. Okay, here we only consider the left-hand side, only related to the, to the uh, unknown variable. Just in case if it is exponential to t times x prime, then we still regard it as a linear uh, differential equation. So we only consider uh, we only consider whether we have uh, multiple terms of the of the unknown function or its derivative multiplied together. Okay, so here, uh, if we have this x times x prime, uh, this is not linear. And then if we have x uh, sine of x, it is not linear. Okay, maybe later you will learn about uh, Fourier series. Fourier series, or maybe not necessarily Fourier series. Maybe you should you should be know about uh, you should know about the Taylor series. Huh? When you know about Taylor series, more possible. Yeah. So Taylor series, uh, sine of x is like uh, x minus x cubed min uh, over three factorial plus x to the fifth power over five factorial minus x to the 7 power over 7 factorial and then up to infinity so here we can see the x cubed term x to the fifth power x to the seventh power so they they are nonlinear term so that's why i call the sine of x a nonlinear term for the for the unknown function and here this is fourth derivative so this term is still linear but x squared is not linear so it depends on or whether we have a the power, not one, or maybe if we have a two or even more multiplied together, then they are not linear. Okay, so and in other sense, if the functional f is linear, it means that it should satisfy 
this uh, equation. Okay, it looks quite uh, complicated, and actually it can be separated into two uh, independent uh, characteristic. So first is called the superposition. Superposition. So maybe in some uh, mathematical class or even physics class, you may have heard about this one called the Die uh, Jia Okay, superposition, which means that if I just add this functional to uh, function x1 of t and then x2 of t. So if we add them first and then put it to this functional, if it is equal to f of x1 of t and then plus f of x2 of t, okay, if they equal to, to each other, then this function satisfy the superposition. So which means that if we add them together first and then put it to the function, functional, or uh, equals to, uh, we take the functional to the individual function, uh, like f of x1 of t, the first one, and then f of x2 of t, the second one, and then add them together. So it is like, okay, we distribute this one to here, distribute this one to there, and then, yeah, just like separate them. So if it satisfies this equation, we call f is, uh, yeah, one of the condition about the, 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 the uh, linear, about linear. Okay, so yeah, maybe, yeah, so of course, uh, if it satisfies this one, uh, or if, uh, the functional is linear or maybe the system is linear it is easier to to understand uh, if it is not linear but yeah actually in in our daily life many things are not linear just like when you go to the supermarket you want to buy some drink for example you need if you would like to buy uh, coca-cola yeah if you buy a tin of coca-cola maybe it costs you uh, three macabre and if you buy a pack of 16, it does not, uh, usually it, it does not cost you three times six equals to uh, 18 macabre Maybe it just costs you 17. So if you buy more, it may be cheaper. And in this sense, it is not linear. It does not uh, mean uh, if you buy one, three times one, buy two teen, uh, three times two, maybe up to five teen, it is, it is correct because you need to buy the individual team uh, one after another. And, but if you buy a 16, then you can buy a pack. And probably it will be cheaper than, than 3 times 6. Okay. So this is superposition. And the other one is called uh, uh, yeah, I'm. Yeah, uh, and the other one is called. Uh, let me see. So, and the other uh, 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 one is like uh, f of a times uh, x of t equals um, a times f of x of t. Okay, so this is. This is the second one. This is the second one. So it is like if you have a function, you multiply by this is of course a a view uh, a, uh, a a constant value. A constant value. Of course, it is not really fixed, but just a just a constant value. If this is multi, for example, if it is three or five or whatever number, so. But actually, for I, I should say it should be arbitrary number. Arbitrary. Arbitrary. Arbitrary number. Arbitrary number. So usually it is a real number, but sometimes it can be complex number. <laughs> okay, depends on uh, what you want to use. But usually we'll, we'll talk about a uh, uh, real, real number. But actually in this course, uh, Maybe we will talk about compact. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, we, will, we will not talk about the quantum mechanics. So, yeah, for quantum mechanics, we, we may need to use the complex number, but 
Yeah, for wave function, we only use the uh, uh, real number. Okay, so in this sense, it means that if you have a function, you mu you multiply it by a arbitrary uh, number a, and then put it to the function. If it satisfy, uh, if it is equal to, you put the function to the uh, you put the function x of t to the function of f first, and then multiply it later. Okay which means that we put it inside so that so that uh, a times x of t compute first and then here we compute f of x of t first and then multiply a later if they equal to each other it is the second condition for the linear okay okay so maybe we can call it just call it uh, scaling okay oh so Scaling, scaling. Okay, so if we just combine this, uh, these two characteristic, it can actually form this one because, yeah. If so, for the first case, if we have a superposition, which means that we can regard this one as the first function, and then we can regard this one as the second function. So if we have a superposition, superposition. We can have a f of a1 x1 of t and then plus f of a2 x2 of t like this and then we can further apply the scaling uh, scaling so from here to there because uh, a1 is the is the arbitrary number and then if it is linear then we can put it outside so it becomes this term and then we can put the a2 outside and then become this term so if the function of a f uh, satisfy this this one we can call it a uh, linear okay so after talking about linear then we can talk about constant coefficient so comparing with the pelvis one we can see this is a linear differential equation here for the coefficient it can be a function of time it can be a function of time okay but of course uh, if all the coefficients are function of time it is still difficult to uh, to solve or maybe it is not uh, available to solve <laughs> it is not uh, available to solve so for a specific type of linear coefficient uh, linear ODE which is called constant coefficient ODE which means that all the coefficients on the left hand side are only constants okay so here rather than having a n of t we have a n a n minus 1 a 1 uh, down to a 0 so all of the coefficients are constant so we call, call, call it constant coefficient linear d and then, and then on, on the right side we still have a g of t so g of t can be different type of function can be different type of function so this type of ODE is easy to solve with a systematic procedure of course you may still find it difficult but yeah at least it is the easiest type uh, of ODE because it means that if the ODE look like this form you can very sure that it has a it has solution and then you know the procedure how to calculate it. although maybe the the procedure are tedious to calculate but but uh, you don't need to think uh, you only need to follow the procedure then you can find the solution of course for g of t uh, we only have solution to some specific type of uh, function like if g of t is a constant it is easy to solve and if it is like uh, exponential function is easy to solve if it is polynomial of time it is easy to solve if it is sinusoidal like uh, sine of t sine of uh, sine of a t or cosine of b t then this type of function are easy to solve and then okay this is two type of uh, trigonometry function but how about tangent c of t okay for this type we don't <laughs> We don't have a, a quick solution to it but yeah actually in in the real world we seldom have tangency of t 
to for to solve because you when you learn uh, trigonometry you know tangency of t which means a tangent pi of two tends to infinity so we we can we can seldom make things go to infinity so yeah so usually we don't really need to solve equation with a tangent on the right hand side because it will cause some divergence problem so sine of a uh, sine of sine function or cosine function is uh, is easily uh, is easily to occur because uh, yeah just just now I mentioned the Fourier series uh, Fourier series which means that for arbitrary function or Fourier transform transform Fourier Zisu and Fourier Bianhuan okay so for arbitrary function if it is periodic function we can always use the Fourier series to represent it which means that we can use different sine or cosine function to represent a periodic function for example a, a square wave okay so a square wave is like uh, we have a sine of x minus sine of uh, 3x over 3 plus sine of 5x over 5 so on and so forth oh, you don't necessarily need to remember that but just just let you know Okay, so for the uh, Fourier series, the square wave can look like this. Okay, so, but yeah, and for other periodic function, we can also use different type of uh, coefficient yeah, for, the, for the sine, cosine to, to stand for it. And if it is non-periodic function, we, we will need Fourier transform rather than a Fourier series. So it is a bit more complicated, uh, but yeah. But generally, it means that for arbitrary function, we can use sinusoidal to represent, to represent it, to decompose it. So, so in this sense, sine and cosine will occur frequently. Okay, so, uh, so here it says uh, to solve a constant coefficient uh, linear ODE. Uh, we should solve the homogeneous solution and then we should solve the particular solution and then finally we can uh, solve complete solution okay which means that okay so here if we have a constant coefficient linear ODE to solve it we have three steps just like uh, someone asks you how to put an elephant in the refrigerator <laughs> okay so there are three steps you can open the door and then put the elephant in and then close the door okay so here we have three steps also we we should uh, solve the homogeneous solution and then we solve the for the particular solution or sometimes we call it non-homogeneous solution and then the first step we add them together to form the complete solution okay so here homogeneous solution xc of t if, if the unknown variable is x Okay, xc of t is the homogeneous solution, xp of t is particular solution, and then the complete solution x is xc of t plus xp of t. Okay, so uh, yeah, so so first of all, you know this is the three step to solve the constant coefficient ODE, and then yeah, let's have a ten minutes break, and then we can know uh, what is the really procedure for solving this one or that one. Okay.